have a service call today on one of these city multi systems address 58 i'll throw up the screen grab but the upstairs controller is spitting a 7102 fault which is a wrong number of connected indoor units so a bit of an odd one um address 58 so this is cugb ga so that one down there say one so i think it's ground level one so it's gonna be one of those two let's pull the cover off and see if we can find it and plug in see what we got i'm gonna take a stab with 1a it's 58 doesn't seem that high so start with this one as i was filming <laughs> perfect i'll rewrite that <laughs> yeah awesome we'll get the cover off this we do have power it's an old heat recovery yjm yeah cool all right confirm we have correct three phase incoming power 397 between the phases and 230 between earth and in each phase. Uh, we'll jump in and we'll test to make sure we've got the correct comms voltage. So, like I said, old YJMs connected to an AG150. And we'll jump in and just test. So, volts DC. Oh. 29, that's correct. To our centralized controller, should be around 24. 27. Cool, everything's communicating correctly, or at least the board's generating the output of the correct output. Let's see here. Oh, interesting, okay. Or are they just reading the... Uh... Oh, that's really interesting. We're getting a different error code here. So 6607 is a comms issue. Fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Oh, okay, so they're actually linked together. There you go. Yeah, we're gonna have to plug in with the Mnet tool. Fifty-nine is right next to it. I'm just gonna pull the cover off this one and see if this is displaying the the comms issue, the six six zero seven. Yeah, interesting that we've got this one at a seven one zero two. Yeah, pull the cover off. You never know when you're gonna get smacked in the face with something idiotic. <laughs> this bottom three. Uh, what the fuck? No fault code. This one's just stuck in like the startup phase. Interesting, eh? Just quickly test some voltages. We might just do a quick reset on this one as well, but yeah, interesting that this board here is just stuck in that uh, initial phase. Incoming voltages are fine. Again, I'll just quickly test our comms. So, indoor to outdoor, or TB3, should be getting 29 volts DC which we are, and then here, I think it was 27 over there, wasn't it? Yeah, 27, there you go. Okay, well, actually before I go ahead and, and shut this thing down, I will just hook up the Mnet tool to see what I'm able to see. see here we do have it's not, even, it's not even actually giving me the fault code either but when you click on 60 uh, sorry 59 it says searching not complete which it's for whatever reason still searching we can see our branch box so what my initial thought was was that potentially might have an issue with the branch box uh, board it can sometimes I mean, usually the, the indicator is that your branch box uh, PCB is faulty. You can have a couple of indoor units turn on, they just basically turn off five, 10 seconds later because there's no signal being committed, uh, transmitted from the branch controller board. But odd, the, the, the structure of this seems quite weird. So I don't know why I can't see those units. It'd be odd for them Considering there's not going to be 50 indoor units to run off separate centralized controllers, I might have to pop over and have a look at that. I doubt that that's the case. 
before anything, just to eliminate me running around like a headless chook, I'm going to power cycle these two units. See what happens, hey? Okay? We'll just see what happens. I'm also gonna get out of this then. Okay, yeah, and we'll do that again later. Ground floor is connected here. We should be able to see it. Let's quickly go versus quiz. While I'm letting these things chill out for a sec, I'm gonna see if I can find where that branch box is. I found it. I'm uh Oh my god. Just put the band off there. <laughs> Just wanna pop this off and see if we've got any LEDs on the board. We can see LED1 is lit, which LED uh, LD1 and CPU is in operation, right? So we've got power to the board. Uh, we can, I didn't bring my meter up, but what I will come back and test is to make sure we've got end net voltage there. Just to confirm 100% really is what, is what I'm looking for, but there you go, address 60. All right, so it's a bit of a walk <coughs> back around. So what I want to do now, before I go back and test end net voltages, let's just see what happens. We turn this and that back on. This is the one I want to focus on the most. I mean, it's weird that that one was spitting out a zero or seven one zero two volt. Uh, yeah, interesting. Anywho, let's just see what happens here. So, when you do reapply power to these things, they go through this startup phase where they show you things like the refrigerant, the address, the uh, what else is it? The refrigerant, the address, the capacity size. Oh, I forgot what the other thing is now. It might be like the, the software version. Hey, it's the software version. Yeah, there we go. So now that I've turned these two basically on at the same time, it'd be interesting to see once that one loads, realistically, this one should also have loaded. And then we can jump back on the Mnet tool. This unit has just finished its upload process or its initial process, and that one has now too. Okay, well, we're in a better position than when we started. That's nice. Let's jump on the Mnet tool. We can already start to see a difference. We weren't seeing those, was it one to seven before, which were run off those condensers down there, which were operating anyway. Really weird, hey? Let's see what happens to eight. Eight was flashing red before. And now it's not. I'll be honest with you, I was kind of hoping that it would. <laughs> I don't want this just to be another video where I come and reset a unit. Ah, come on. Anyway that map is looking a hell of a lot better. Okay, well, next thing, let's, uh, actually, we'll, we'll monitor both, may as well, I'm here. It's my first time at this site, so may as well monitor everything. Okay, so, just having a quick look. I don't know how long this thing's been off for, but it's a good opportunity if it's just been sitting for a while, just to quickly go over and have a look at the thermistors, just to make sure everything's looking okay. So, Start off with your, uh, at least I start off with my transducer, so, you know, 133 or uh, 1330 Pascal, uh, Pascals. I've been talking a lot about static pressure recently. Um, 133, or 1330 KPA, which according to that is 19.8. So as long as everything, everything is sitting relatively close to that, except for TH4, TH4 is always gonna be elevated. Is that thing about to turn on, is it? look <clears throat> no it's not okay anyway what i was saying as long as everything reads relatively close to that i'm happy uh, in terms of thermistors like i said discharge is usually elevated because it's getting the trickle charge down to heat the sump of the compressor usually reflected in the discharge temp while it's off as it stands everything there's looking pretty good let's let's get this thing to run in a test cooling Yeah, it's pretty warm today. Let's do a test cooling.
had to relocate because the sun make it quite hard to see the computer screen so if it's hard for me I can imagine it's harder for you guys um, so master shut down now our slave is running you can start to see here uh, we, I don't know, our slave sorry our master might be able okay, no, here we go this, this unit's now starting to see that like I can the fan spinning consider the coil although it has seen better days yeah, we'll wait for the master to ramp up now and we're gonna see a lot better outlet temps on our TH3s there soon, I'd imagine, and inlet temps as well, but keep having a look. City multis do have a tendency of, so you can see here it says high pressure drop. They can do some funny things for the first 10, 15 minutes, like all, like all VIV, VRF. Just let them run for a little while and then come back and have a look. You can see here TH5, which is our suction oh, inlet uh, accumulator inlet temperature. Our suction, just pre the accumulator. It's still reading quite high, but SV1A, which is like the oil return uh, solenoid, is still open. So usually you'll see that when it's quite high. You can probably hear that hissing noise. That's it. So for the first four minutes of operation, that will be running or if it feels like it needs to because our, su our suction pressure drops. System's still in initial mode too, so just waiting for it to come out of that before I fully start diving into the data that's coming through. Keeping an eye on it, everything looks okay at the moment, but yeah, we'll just wait for it to come out of initial mode. You can see now, SV1A has closed and TH5 has come down to six and a half and 5.9 people are starting to get a little bit cold in there too so they start shutting it down not uncommon just in case anyone's wondering to see these things for whatever reason I don't really know why but they do say zero superheat a lot of the time in a test cooling mode I don't really know why but it's not uncommon well I'll run it later just in like a regular you know we'll, we'll just operate it and you can see it'll, it'll be fine but for whatever reason if someone can tell me why I've asked a few people and no one ever really knows why it does that. It just does it. <laughs> anyway, everything's looking pretty good. Uh, 6.8, 13.9, SE6, 0 0.8. Looking pretty good there. I'll, I'll keep having a look through. Like I said, we're still in initial mode. If anything changes, we'll come back. People must be getting cold in there. They're, uh, they're starting to shut us down. I hazard a guess we're gonna drop out one of these condensers in a sec, but as it stands, everything's looking pretty good. I'll keep monitoring, but I'm, I'm really happy with those numbers. I'll get you in close as you can see. Nothing standing out to be odd. It's all looking pretty good. It does seem like it is literally just a reset unfortunate but look I'll, I'll honestly I'll still release this video I mean obviously you guys are watching it now so you know that I have released it but it is just an interesting thing to see that you know you can get some really weird stuff happening with these and it can really just be nothing uh, you know it's probably recommended that you shut these things down you know at least maybe once a year or once every couple of years because they, unless they've been worked on they probably haven't been shut down since they were installed back in you know early early 2010s or something like that you know and they're electronics electronics can get bugs in them they can do some weird things over time so every now and then it's probably not a bad idea just to shut everything down let it sit start it up again and it basically just starts fresh which is essentially what we did here so here we are just one quick thing i was noticing i just want to double check uh this is the this is the other stage right so address 5152 uh, what I'm doing is just quickly shutting that one down because I was just looking at TH6 here and 12.6 seems quite low. Even though that condenser wasn't actually running, I'll go back to the slide. Where are we? So there you go. You can see TH6 there is sitting at 11.3 while TH6 up here is 56.5, but that one's running. So what I want to quickly do is I've just shut this one down and I've gone and chucked the um, prohibit on so they can't turn it on or off. And we'll just do a quick check of the thermistors on this one. 
It's been sitting for about 15, 20 minutes now and it basically is reading exactly the same as when we turned it off. So if we go back 11 point, you know, yeah. So that TH6 to Mr. is faulty. That is on the slave unit of the other, other system. So I'll quote that up to replace and we can come back and sort that one out. Everything else looks okay. The TH6 to Mr. up there is slowly coming down. It was sitting at about 60 degrees when I turned it off. So it's you know, slowly coming down, but it's, it's fine. Yeah, we'll get this thing back up and running. Just thought I'd quickly do a, a physical test as well, just to make sure, but well, let me get this in and I'll show you. TH6, 3.18 volts coming back. TH3, 2.7. So those should be relatively the same. At this point, they've been off for 25 minutes. They should be relatively the same. And there's our resistance as well. So pretty low just for comparison on the other one as well.